Hi, and welcome to my presentation on Behaviorism Learning Theory. Behaviorism equates learning with behaviors that can be observed and measured. Here, reinforcement is the key to successful knowledge transfer. The goal of instruction, then, is to elicit the desired response from the learner who is presented with a target stimulus. Key contributors of behavioral learning theory include its founder, B.F. Skinner, Pavlov, who studied classical conditioning, and Albert Bandura, who used the principle of behavioral learning theory, along with cognitivism, to develop social learning theory. The basic assumptions of behaviorism are relatively simple and include the following. All behavior is learned from the environment through classical or apparent conditioning. Behaviorism is concerned with observable behavior, not cognitive elements like thinking, internal motivation, attitudes, or emotions. There is little difference between the way humans and other animals learn. And finally, yet perhaps most prominent, behavior is the result of stimulus and response. This theory defines learning as a change in behavior of the learner. Here, student motivation is extrinsic and based only on reward and punishment. Thus, learners will demonstrate behaviors that bring them positive feelings and avoid behaviors that bring them negative feelings. Under the framework of behaviorism, the role of the learner is a passive receiver of information. The learner merely listens, follows directions, and responds to environmental stimuli. Here we see a puppy training to one day become a service dog. To explain a little more about how assistance dogs for achieving independence uses behaviorism principles to train their dogs is canine services manager Anna Jones. Hi, I'm Anna Jones. I'm the canine services manager assistance dogs for achieving independence. We are a program of the Ability Center and our mission is to increase the independence of people with disabilities by raising and training um, service and therapy dogs to help with that individual's daily needs. We primarily do that through positive reinforcement training methods to increase desired behaviors in the mind. Um, and then we also do use limited amounts of punishment um, as a way to communicate what are undesirable behaviors such as a no or an eh to interrupt the dog's behavior and to teach them something that we do want. The role of the teacher in behaviorism learning theory is that of motivator and facilitator. The teacher provides the stimulus, which could be activities or prompts, and provides immediate reinforcements, feedback, to keep students participating. So we have seen how behavioral learning theory applies to teaching our canine best friends, but how does this theory work in the human world? What are the instructional implications of behaviorism? Behaviorism is used whenever teachers reward or punish student behaviors to encourage or discourage them from happening again. An example of this might be a behavior chart where students clip up for good behavior or clip down for misbehavior. Here to tell us more about positive reward systems is our behaviorism expert, Ava. Hi, my name is Ava and I have a jack away ticket. I got this because I was respectful, responsible, and ready. When you put it in a little box, and your teacher pulls your name out, then you get a prize. What kind of prize can you get? You can get smelly bookmarks, extra computer time, you can take a friend and do pajama day. I love Jackaway tickets. Behaviorism driven instructional activities might include question and answer types that gradually increase in difficulty, guided practice, and regular reviews of material. Examples of skill and drill activities might include repetitions with flashcards to help memorize facts or formulas, or playing a piano skill over and over until muscle memory automates correct and fluent technique. The automation of a specified procedure through repetition is known as chaining. Other behaviorist techniques include segmenting, breaking down a complex procedure into simpler steps to keep the learner's attention focused on the task. To shape the behavior, click and treat as the dog offers behaviors that are closer and closer to the end goal. Under. The end result looks like this. There are several limitations to behaviorism as a learning theory. 
For example, behaviorism fails to explain why some learning, such as the recognition of new language patterns by young children, exist when there is no reinforcement mechanism. Behaviorism also does not recognize human free will. Instead, it explains that all behavior is a result of environmental influence. Furthermore, behaviorism does not take into consideration how cognitive processes, thinking, emotions, motivations, and attitudes affect learning. It also does not account for experimental learning, exploratory learning, or critical thinking and problem-solving strategies. Based on this theory alone, it would be difficult to apply learning to new situations. And finally, perhaps the greatest weakness of the theory has been explained by Alfie Cohn in his book, Punishment by Rewards. Here, Cohn explains how teaching with positive reinforcements or rewards actually decreases long-term motivation and performance. Dr. Jessica Briggs will now explain more to us about the limits of behaviorism as it applies to classroom instruction. One of the ways I use behaviorism learning theory is through the practice of skill and drill. In music making, in order to convey any expression in a piece, we have to be able to physically play the gestures that the piece requires. So in order to do all the physical components of playing, we have to do it over and over and over until it just becomes automatic when we start engaging muscle memory. Um, I don't use rewards or incentive programs for my teaching because my goal as a teacher is to inspire really a lifelong love of learning new music. And I don't want students to do that for me. I don't want them to play for me. I want them to play for themselves. So I try and create situations that students will have fun and that they find engaging so that they want to keep doing it for themselves. Mm, there you go. So how can new technologies fit in with an old theory? Expanded by constructivism, behaviorism in the 21st century has evolved into thriving fields of research such as behavior therapy and behavior analysis. In this fun game, look for a color in my eyes. This will help you keep eye contact with me. Do you see the color yet? Excellent. You paid close attention to the eye color. Its positive and negative reinforcement techniques can be very effective, such as in treatments for human disorders including autism, anxiety disorders, and antisocial behavior. Virtual reality headsets are being used to help treat soldiers with post-traumatic stress disorder. The new technology builds on traditional exposure therapy, exposing the patients to a fear-inducing object or context, but in a safe environment. Educational apps such as the ones you see here are high in behavioral learning theory. Extra Math and Flashnote Derby are both skill and drill type activities designed to help students memorize facts. Students are rewarded for correct responses with either increased speed or a virtual badge. Incorrect responses are punished with setbacks, such as loss of speed, loss of badges, and problem repetition. In the adult world, companies are using health device technologies such as Fitbits to monitor their employees' health. In exchange for meeting company health goals, Owens Corning employees can earn monetary incentives such as premium health insurance credits. It was humorous, however, to hear, you can keep tracking points after you meet your quarter goal, but no one does that because there's no longer an incentive. So again, you can see, even though rewards can work to change behavior, they are limiting. Once the reward stops, so does the behavior. As we have learned, behaviorism isn't just for training puppies. It has merits in both education and therapy, modifying human behaviors through reinforcements. Behaviorism has provided a basic foundation on what can extrinsically motivate people as well as what can encourage wanted behaviors while decreasing unwanted habits. But behaviorism is only where we start our learning theory journey. Behaviorism is important because it helps us know when we are right and wrong and whether we have done a good job or not. It helps us understand our performance and our place in the world. But creating the desire for true learning cannot be bought with simple rewards. To spark that fire, a true desire for learning, thought must be given to intrinsic motivators, memories, attitudes, emotions, and social interactions with others. I love you, Good job.